Good morning, and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Belle. On today's call, we're going to talk about seven E's. That's right, eating the letter E. Seven E's for strong faith. You ever had someone tell you they'll give you an E for effort? Hmm. Well, what does that mean? Is that supposed to make you feel better or good? Look, if you've expended the effort and say, look what I did, not meaning to sound ungrateful, but I never want to be recognized for just being in the game of life. I always want to cross the finish line first, my arms lifted high, giving God all the praise, honor, and glory for making it happen. When I strive for a goal, my faith is always extended. That's why I'm going to share with you, we're going to share with you, seven keys for ease and for effort. We're talking about mountain moving, devil chasing, debt canceling, wealth building, bondage breaking, yoke destroying, assignment making, life changing, and destiny shaping faith. Mm -hmm. Strong. Yes, strong. Is. Number one. Expand your borders geographically and mentally. You believe that Acts 10.34 is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. When the scripture says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Are you confident beyond a shadow of a doubt that your Heavenly Father is no respecter of persons? That's what he's done from one believer he'll do for another. Hallelujah. We trust your answers an emphatic yes. Truth be told, anyone who doubts Acts 10.34 may well doubt other part of the scriptures as well. If you know God is no respecter of person, then you know he'll do for you what he did for Jabez in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, New Living Translation. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to God, the God of Israel. And he prayed, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do. Keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted his request. Hallelujah. See, God wants to expand our territory, enlarge our borders, move us from where we are to a total level of success in and through him. Yes, God wants to expand the borders of our sphere of influence. But he also wants to expand our capacity as well. Mm -hmm. That's good, honey. <clears throat> Psalm 119.32. 119.32. New Living Translation. I will pursue your commands. Hallelujah. I will pursue your commands if you ex to expand my understanding. If you've never read the book, The Prayer of Jabez. We encourage you to get it. <clears throat> really, and, really, really. And you can go to. Christian Bookstore. Doc. Christian Soldier Bookstore. Christian Soldier Bookstore. That's ours. Dot com. And order and look for it. And we'll save you some money. Number two, elevate your conversation to a higher spiritual and success level. We need to eliminate certain words from our vocabulary. Quit, can't, try, failure, negative, and compromise. We need to guard our hearts truly because out of it flows is the abundance of our life. The mouth will speak. We need to be sure <clears throat> that we are not self-doubting or, or negative talking about ourselves. In Ephesians 4.29, in the classic Amplified Bible, it says, let no foul or polluting language, no, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. But only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. And when I I want to add in there, and to yourself. That's you don't true. You need to put yourself down. That's it. 
as is fitting to the need of the occasion that it might be a blessing and give grace, God's favor to those who hear it. And you would be one who hears it. We need to speak the pure, the powerful, and the positive from the word of God over every person and situation we deal with, including saying, Lord, your grace is sufficient for me. Give me the words I need to say. Take the time to write down something positive about yourself and about the people you deal with on a regular basis. Let it become a focal point of your next conversation with them. Hallelujah. Your grace <clears throat> is sufficient for me. For me. We could sing. <clears throat> Amen. Number three, expect divine appointments and supernatural connections every day, starting today. As you pursue your goals, raise your level of expectation for divine appointments and supernatural connections to people who God can use to get you where you are from where you are to where you want to be. God can bring the right person in your life. Snap those fingers, babe. Just like that. 1 Samuel 9, 15 and 16. 1 Samuel 9, 15, 16. Message Bible. The very day before, God had confided in Samuel. This time tomorrow. Oh, oh I Lord. love that. You remember that sermon I did about it? <clears throat> this time tomorrow. I did a teaching on that. And within a, a month, I heard a pastor in London, one in California, and somewhere else preach. Almost the identical sermon. It's a good one. It is. It means it's a good one. But the verse says, this time tomorrow, I'm sending a man from the land of Benjamin to meet you. You're going to anoint him as a priest over the people of Israel. He will free my people from the Philistine oppression. Yes, I know all about their hard circumstances. I hear, I heard their cries for help. Saul was a donkey trader. Until he had a divine appointment. So be vigilant. Be watchful. Be expectant. Never be judgmental about who or how God chooses to use you. And you're giving you supernatural connections. If you're wanting to start a business, spend time with people who have expertise in that field of endeavor. Ask their opinions. Seek their advice. Don't tell them your secrets, but show yourself friendly. Number four, endue yourself with a spiritual awareness of who you're working for and how that relates to your goal or career <clears throat> and in any advancement and other income opportunities. What will you be doing today, <clears throat> this week, this month, this year, the rest of this year to increase your value as an employee to your current employer? or your service to those who, if you own your own business, to those you are servicing. If your answer to that question in any way contains anything negative, perhaps about your current employer, <clears throat> then it's hardly that you're going to advance beyond where you are because you have the wrong perspective. First, we need to get Colossians 3.17 and verse 23. Colossians Chapter 3, verses 17 and 23, down in our spirits. Verse 17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And verse 23 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily to the Lord and not unto men. Second, we need to realize <clears throat> that everything we do on our job, we are doing as unto the Lord. He's the one who's going to, well, cover our employee evaluation, <laughs> no matter what it is or who it comes by. That's it. Once we get in our hearts that we are working for the Lord, you'll just find a new desire for excellence in all your hands find to do on the job. When you are faithful where you are, then God will open other opportunities beyond your wildest expectations and dreams. Number five, enjoy the benefits of a good job. Your attitude will turn an average job 
and to an above average job. Ecclesiastes 5.18, 5.18. Beyond that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he has taken under the sun all the days of his life, which God has given him, for it is his portion. God has a portion for you. Can somebody say hallelujah? <clears throat> Number six, established family time that is written in stone. Ecclesiastes 11.9, 11.9 in the Living Bible says that if you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. <clears throat> there should be some absolutes in life. First, your time with God should be immovable. And second, create real value and lasting memories with your family time. If you're coming home for dinner, <clears throat> put your cell phone on a table and just don't answer it during the dinner hour. Matter of fact, flip it to silent. When our children lived at home, that was, well, huh, texting. <clears throat> there was no texting during meals. There was no phone time during meals. And that may, at this point, seem like a little thing. But the point of it is, is some of these young people, my goodness, our children. <clears throat> Our children alone, but we know it was with all the kids at that, you know, point. They were doing between eight and 11,000 texts a month. So the point of it is, is when you're with a family on a family adventure, be with, be present in the moment. That's it. And with the family. Number seven, energize your faith. How do you energize your faith? It's simple. The word of God and time in his presence. That's it, pure and simple. But we feel impressed to share three scriptures with you. 1 Corinthians 12, 6. 12, 6, classic amplified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there are distinctive varieties of operation of working to accomplish a whole thing. But it's the same God who inspires, energizes them and all. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 7, 12. 712 message map. Double protection, wisdom and wealth, plus this bonus. Wisdom energizes its owner. You know, I said three, two's enough. Because this list of seven powerful E words could go on. I haven't even covered empower, enlighten, enable, extend, and entertain. Just to name a few. But time's run out. Hallelujah. But you can do a little study yourself on these other E words. Empower, enlighten, enable, extend, and entertain. Hallelujah. Go to heraldherring.com if you're blessed by the teaching or the ministry. Click the button that says sow a seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have <laughs> you sow. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. That's right. And until tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. And do the things you've heard us speak about today.